Hey YouTube, this is going to be an exciting and insightful video, so stay tuned. We'll take a look at solar EVT or evacuated tube system for, heat, for water heating in a geyser. We will also take a look at how you can save money in the meantime, even without employing solar heating. The cost of energy has generally increased over the last year from fuel to electricity and furthermore, there is a chance of another electricity hike in April next year. So let's take a look at what you can do to save on your water heating work. By the way, the impetus to this project was due to my ether timer failing after eight years. So instead of replacing it, I decided to build my own smart device. This device me measures the temperature of the geyser and uploads the data to a database. In addition, I'm able to switch the element on or off using Telegram. I chose Telegram since it offers a straightforward interface to integrate to. As an aside, something that breaks or solving a problem is a catalyst for innovation. Anyway, let's take a look at what the data has revealed. Before we go to the data, I just want to mention that when I installed this three years ago, it had 42 tubes. However, a few months ago, we, we had a leak in the heat exchanger above. That black part there at the top, that's the heat exchanger, and it was leaking. But fortunately, I used a very good installer who replaced it free of charge. Now, instead of having 42 tubes, we have 36 tubes. Because of the new heat exchanger, it's apparently more efficient than the old heat exchanger. So we don't need to have as many tubes. But anyway, now that we are able to monitor the whole system uh, and it has uh, historical data, we are able to track the efficiency of, of the system even if it changes over time. That small 30 watt solar panel there, that is to run the 12 volt circulation pump. So let's get right into the data. Okay, I have been running this device for three months now. And what the device uh, does is this, as I mentioned earlier on, it does upload data to the to a database and then it allows me to extract the data and then I can chart it for further analysis. So on a perfectly sunny day when no electricity was used, the temperature peaks to about 70 degrees Celsius and this is from a starting temperature of around, this is at half past 11 from 10 o'clock because at 10 o'clock in the morning that's when the, the, the geyser circulation pump starts running and this is now when the water's actually started heating up. So from a starting temperature of about 38 degrees, we see that at 11 o'clock, it, it hit just under 50 degrees Celsius and then there's a steep trough there. So there's some hot water demand there, but it started uh, peaking again. And then at, this is 12 noon in GMT, so that's around 2 p.m. So at 2 p.m. it peaked to 70 degrees. So this was... A really nice example of a of a hot sunny day because normally on a partly cloudy day you'd you'd hit 70 degrees maybe by about 4 p.m. and this is taking into account the hot water demand here at around 11 11 a.m. and then gradually as water demand this is around five o'clock so the, the water temperature starts decreasing and this is this steep trough here is where somebody probably took a shower and then as the water stands it, uh, it drops its temperature naturally and what we see here is this device is also recording the ambient temperature so you can see that the ambient temperature and the geyser temperature the, the, the geyser temperature is directly proportional to the ambient temperature okay and here when it hit uh, uh, half past two in the afternoon, um, that's when the, the ambient temperature starts dropping. 
So this is the ambient temperature in the ceiling where the geyser is housed. Next one. So let's look at a partly cloudy day before. We see that at 7 a.m. the water temperature is about 37 degrees and 7 a.m. is around here. So this is 5 a.m. GMT. So this is 7 a.m. in our local South African time. So it's about 37 degrees. The element is then turned on here and this is where you start seeing the, the, the water temperature increasing because by this time there's not enough sun to heat the water up that quickly. So the element is really fast to heat the, the, the water. So this is just to cater for your hot water demand for the early morning, for like for example, showers and ablution and all of that. Thereafter, the sun takes over around here because the cloud cover normally clears out by by the morning and this is around 12 noon now and then we see that the the, the sun starts heating up the water and it heats up it peaks at around just over 50 degrees by 4 p.m and then it starts dropping again so on the next slide this shows you the same day now where the element was turned on to meet the hot water demand in the morning and then for the rest of the day the element is off so we used about this is about six o'clock here to about yeah so about 45 minutes we probably used just under four kilowatt hours of electricity to heat the water there now let's look at a completely cloudy day and this is 27 december when there was heavy cloud cover and rain as well so the morning we had to employ the element to heat up the water for the hot water demand and then for the rest of the day we let the water stand because we have instant water heaters in the basin and that takes care of hot water demand in in your basin so the there's no point heating up the the water here during this time because it's just going to get wasted however the following morning that is when we need to employ the element once again because it is not hot enough to to meet the hot water demands for the morning so what we what i did there is is before i went to bed i sh used the telegram scheduled messaging feature and that will then i just schedule the the geyser to turn on at 5 a.m and then turn off at 6 a.m so run for one hour and brought that brought the temperature nicely to just over 50 degrees so that's one of the advantages of using Telegram once again because it gives you all of these features out of the box and it saves you from having to code all of this. So you could have a minimum viable product much sooner. My device has also been programmed to upload data each time the element is on. So from this chart, you can see that the element ran for approximately one and a half hours and on the four kilowatt element that I'm running in my 200 liter geyser that's around about six kilowatt hours of electricity that i had to use to heat up the the water that's because of uh, the lack of sun on that day let's take a look now at the rate of loss now what we're going to find is that the higher the geyser temperature the higher the rate of loss as well so here at around 10 p.m., remember these times are in GMT, around 10 p.m., the geyser is just under 50 degrees. So this is, it looks like it's about 47 degrees. And at 5 a.m., this is 420, so actually 20 past 6, the geyser hits just above 40 degrees, so that's about 42 degrees. And over that period between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m., the loss is approximately 10%. And you can see that it is it is almost directly proportional to your ambient temperature as well. So as the ambient temperature drops, so too does the geyser water temperature drop. And here, the geyser now is at 55 degrees. Ambient temperature is about 26 degrees. Here, the ambient temperature is about 25. And the curve here is steeper because as the geyser temperature is hotter what time is this? this is from nine quarter to quarter to ten quarter to ten maybe there was somebody using 
the geyser water during this time or maybe i would say yeah it probably there was some demand here and then from yeah from 11 o'clock there was no demand at all so from this par part from 11 o'clock to one in the morning we hit 50 degrees from about 52 degrees and then at six in the morning we hit 48 degrees and that's about a 13 percent loss and just note the steepness of this curve here so here look at the steepness of this curve it's quite quite steep compared to the other ones and here we're looking at 6 p.m just under 70 degrees and by by about 10 p.m we're just under 68 degrees and then by 6 in the morning we are about 60 61 degrees so just by the water standing overnight it it lost so many degrees and that demonstrates the inefficiency of water being heated in a geyser so i hope this is this is inf insightful to you but let's look at some of the interpretations that we can conclude here so let's see at what can we conclude now from the data we can confirm that heating water in a geyser is inefficient because the rate of loss over time results in the loss of money with a timer you can save however it still results in wastage because the water may not be used immediately and that will cause the geyser to lose temperature while standing the rate of loss is lesser when the water temperature is less than or equal to 44 degrees Celsius. It makes sense and it is cheaper to heat water and use it immediately. So what does that mean? It means that if you plan to shower at 7 a.m., then heat your water up, say, at um, half past 6, and then you can use your water by 7 a.m. However, if you continue to heat your water all the time and allow the geyser element to keep the water temperature constant at whatever the thermostat is set at, then that's going to result in, that's going to maximize your losses. So you can comfortably take a shower, a 5 to 10 minute shower, as long as the water temperature is greater than or equal to 45 degrees Celsius. Now, naturally, this depends on the ambient temperature as well as the temperature of the water coming into the geyser now this is season dependent so in winter if you decide to take a shower and the water at the start of the shower is 45 degrees then you cannot have a 10 minute shower because if the water that is coming into the geyser is going to be very cold then you would probably end up having lukewarm water maybe after about five minutes so when's the best time to shower if you have a solar water heater the best time is in the evening because the water is at its hottest after a nice sunny day and you are not going to suffer the losses of temperature as the water stands to shower in the morning because if you decide to shower in the morning the water the geyser has lost at least 8 to 10 degrees already. Does having a timer help? Not exactly, because the water will heat up at certain times, and if it's not consumed, you're still going to waste that energy that you use. You're simply paying for a convenience, but it comes with wastage. So just-in-time heating offers the highest efficiency, i.e. heat the water and use it immediately.